Welcome, everybody. My name is Brian Minnick, and I'm very excited to talk with everyone today here for Litmus Live Online. Thank you for joining me. My name is Brian Minnick, the Chief Operating Officer at Zero Bounce. Today, we're going to go over how you can block bad emails without being an email marketing expert. And so there's this is going to really help two different types of people, the email marketers, and also if you have a technical team, they're going to love you as well. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, do a few introductions here on, on the presentation today. So once again, my name is Brian Minnick. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Zero Bounce. Um, I have been in the tech and marketing industry for over 15 years. It's been in my entire professional career. Uh, I have started as a software developer, moved into operations, but I've always been touching and part of uh, systems, marketing, email, especially digital marketing in particular. So really excited to talk to you guys today. And I really want to thank you all for joining and being part of the presentation. A uh, little bit about Zero Bounce. So we are the number one email verifier. I have almost 300,000 people and customers on our platform. Uh, we've broken that 250 mark a little bit ago. Uh, these are just a sampling of some of the largest brands or some of the larger brands. Uh, we have actually much larger brands that we can't share the logos with, uh, but just a sampling of some of them that we can. And so they're trusted uh, with us using and sending data to us, as well as the accuracy and reliability of our product. So we're very uh, honored to have them, and we've been part of Inc. 5000 quite a few times as well as some of the fastest growing companies. So let's get into it. Um, how do we block bad emails or leads without being an email marketing expert? So there's really not a big secret when you're talking about uh, the prospects or data that you might have in your list, right, or how you're acquiring that data. Uh, there's really there's successful ways to clean that stuff up and make sure that the only thing that you're working on, emailing, prospecting, nurturing, are good, valid emails that are deliverable. And I would consider those a marketable contact. So we'll go through it today. I'll show you how to identify this stuff and how to uh, really look like a, a rock star when you get all this bad stuff out of the way. So, uh, you know, first, let's just back it up here just a sec. Uh, is email marketing still a good revenue stream? I hear this a lot. I've actually been hearing this my entire professional career. Oh, email's dead, email's dying, it's going down, they're going to other channels. No way, uh, say, that's the most respectful way I'll say it. It's not even close. We are seeing email increase use, or email usage increasing. We are seeing the number of emails being sent increasing. And as a result of that, it's actually becoming an even bigger market. Uh, and, and what we've seen as well as more people stepping into the market as, as the pandemic hit, uh, because door-to-door -door sales went away, and a lot of other types of traditional sales tactics and marketing tactics uh, weren't as good as they were before. And so people resorted to email. What we have seen now is 88% of people are using email every single day. Think about that. That's a huge number. Uh, you can't say that 88% of people check their mailbox every day. You can't say 88% of people are going to trade shows every year. No way. Uh, email is by far still the best marketing and uh, sales avenue if you're looking to expand your business. 47% uh, of people open emails from brands because the messaging was relevant. So what you're sending to these people is really important. Make sure it's something that they're looking for. Make sure it's something that they've asked for. You should be sending people relevant content and things that are ultimately going to make them want to learn more or see more. It's really important. Sending irrelevant content to people or telling them you're going to do one thing and doing something very different is going to actually get you in some trouble. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. What we have seen as well is, is uh, and this is coming from Statista, $10.89 billion in forecasted revenue is coming in 2023 for email marketing. This is massive. Look at the growth expected by 2025. You know, this is another 25% growth, you know, 20, 25% growth that's going to happen in email marketing in the next two years. Guys, this is huge. If you're not part of this, you have to be part of it. And if you are part of it, great. We're going to talk about some things today that are going to get you uh, better engagement and better conversion rates that are going to help boost your email marketing uh, reputation as well. So, uh, I hear this a lot from a lot of biz dev people, and, I, and I've experienced it myself uh, when trying to grow grow the business. It's it's very, very difficult. Like when you go and get these email lists or you go and look at your database that you've been acquired, you know, you've had for 10 years, eight years, six years, 
It really doesn't even matter. Look at this number. 23% of your list is going to decay annually, meaning that 23% of the data on your email database is going to basically wipe out. It is not going to be a marketable contact. This is happening because of all the different things that took place. And it's just examples of, of what's really relevant and recent is, you know, the pandemic with all the layoffs and, and businesses closing and then popping up. All of those emails are going bad. People are losing domains. People just spin up domains. And there's lots of other different uh, types of emails that will really just ultimately decay this number. Now, the problem is not the number, just to be clear. We're just giving you statistics. The problem is if you don't do anything, that's an actual very big problem. 23% of your list not uh, you know is going bad every year. And if you're not doing anything about it, that is a problem. Uh, invalid emails will end up leading to nowhere. So when you have an email address, it is most likely for for almost everybody I know, it is their unique identifier for their business. Now you might have a customer ID or something else, but ultimately this email address is driving the business for that customer or that prospect. And so you have to make sure that what you have there is good and it's not expired, it's not fake, it's not a typo, it wasn't just someone smashing the keyboard. This is all really easy to get past your simple syntax validation. So if you're just looking for the at symbol and you're just looking for the dot, the dot, and a, a you know a com at the end or net at the end, uh, sure you're gonna block a few really bad ones. But there's really actually email addresses out there that are bad. Uh, they were created to be bad, and they do not provide marketing value. The issue with all of this is your deliverability, because the more emails you send that are bouncing or being marked as spam or going to groups of people that never signed up for your emails and now they're all marking you as spam or all of this stuff is really bad for your reputation. And ultimately it's gonna affect your ability to get into the inbox. And one of the things that's super important, we all have to be very aware, inbox is the key to success with your marketing in email, okay? I don't care what offer you have, I don't care how great the product is, and I don't care everything you're doing. If it's landing in the spam folder, no one even sees what you're doing. They're not talking about you. They're not forwarding it. They're not clicking. They're not reviewing it in their weekly meeting with the rest of their team. Nothing. They don't see it. So deliverability is the ability to be into the inbox where people are seeing your message. Now, once you get into the inbox, it's up to you as the marketer for your content, for your offers, for your you know nurturing to take it. But you have to be in inbox. And a lot of people don't even realize they're not there. So a lot of items can put you into, get you into trouble with your deliverability. And that's what I want to make sure today that you guys are all aware of. So we're going to say, oh, well, there's, you know, there's these other bad emails that can be on your email list, right? So we all know we have good emails. Of course we do. I hope you do. No one's in the business of having bad email address on their, their database. But what you don't realize is the amount of bad emails that are actually out there that are disguised as good looking emails to you and someone else who's not paying close attention. There's a different types of emails here, which I'll talk about. There's abuse emails, which is, uh, these are people who are known to mark you as spam. And so what Zero Bounce is doing is we are, uh, so we're a validation provider and you would bring data into our platform and we would analyze it and provide data back. We are checking to see if the email address actually exists. And then we're checking many other factors. And this is a little piece of that. So people who are known to mark you as spam, you do not ever want to send a cold email to that type of person. If they didn't sign up for your email uh, newsletter or whatever you're sending, you do not want to send to these people. They kill your reputation. These people mark you as spam. And particularly, they marked as spam when they had the ability to unsubscribe. They chose not to unsubscribe and they marked as spam 10 or more times on different campaigns that we have access to to provide this type of insight to you as a new marketer to this contact. You do not want to email these people. Disposable emails, these are temporary contacts. I always just brings me back to my childhood is the inspector gadget messages that poof, blow up in your, uh, you know, blow up in his hands. These are the same exact things. These emails are disposable. They are literally created to be thrown away within minutes. That is the entire point. There's no registration. You just hit a website, they give you an email address, I can send and receive from it, I can get past your temporary, sorry, your, uh, your, your gated content if you want me to sign up for your newsletter, that's great. 
This is being used a lot. Now, many times and most times it's malicious. Sometimes it's for anonymous reasons. Now it's again, it's fine if you want to kind of accept these emails so that they can get past your gate because you're giving them some content that ultimately might help you with, with a sale or better prospecting, but you should not want to put them into a nurturing campaign. They have no marketing value. Those emails are going to bounce instantly and they're going to start to tarnish your reputation, especially if you're not getting them out. The role-based emails, these are different types of emails that I'm sure we're all familiar with. These are the group ones. Uh, info at, sales at, hello at, support at. These are risky emails to send to, and I highly recommend you segment them and get them kind of into a different list. Uh, but what could happen here is you can get you can get a lot of bounces. That is very possible. And secondly, you can get a lot of emails that go to groups of people that you never intended to send to. And they're like, what is this? Spam, spam. So I've seen this where group emails will go to, go to let's just say, keep it clean a dozen different people. I've seen much higher, but dozen is not uncommon. If you send an email to one contact and then it gets spread out to 12 other people because it's a group email, it forwards to them. And those people go and mark you as spam. You just got 10, 12, eight, whatever that number is, spam complaints off one email. Really bad. It's very bad for your reputation. You start to look like a spammer. And so what's happening here is those type of things can tarnish your reputation. You want to be cautious of them. Again, I'm not saying that they're awful and never send to it. Uh, but what I am saying is slow down and maybe see if you can reach out to that person and get a better contact, if that might be a, a, a good solution. Just be careful with these type of emails. Catch all emails. These are a little riskier to send to because when you go to validate, there is no way to tell if they are uh, good or bad emails. So it could bounce, it could forward, or could deliver. And it's, uh, it's actually a little bit of a problem here in the marketing space and the best thing that we can do is kind of tell you about it and give you some more additional insight with some other tools to get an idea of if this is a safe email to send to or not. So pay attention to those as well. If you're sending to business emails, you absolutely have catch all emails on there. Uh, spam traps. These are really bad. So yes, the name is pretty self-descriptive, but if you are, uh, if you have spam traps on your email address, on your email list, they are basically created. These are email addresses. They look real. Could be Sally Joe at, you know, I don't know, sportinggoods.com. And this email address was created by the mail server or the ISP or the mail filter that lays on top of some of these domains. And they were designed to receive mail and instantly blacklist everybody that is sending to them because they never signed up for emails. They never signed up to get marketed. And they put the email addresses out on websites that are targeted and get scraped by these bots and people that sell you data. This is really bad. They are literally setting you up to make sure you don't get into inbox on any of the uh, domains or companies that they are monitoring. Be very careful. These are created every day. There's recycled ones. So you might even say, Brian, but I've had this email for 10 years on my list. How can it be a spam trap? Well, they're also taking these abandoned accounts and doing that as well because there's been no engagement. No one's logging in. No one's replied to these emails. No one's clicking on these emails. They will retire that email and recycle it into a spam trap. You have to be careful. And you have to know what's on your list. They're really bad for your sender score and instantly blacklist you. So pay attention to those. They're very, very bad. Only takes, and statistically speaking, just going to show it here, 0 0.01 of all data we've checked had spam traps in it which means for every 10,000 emails, one of them is gonna be a spam trap. Scale that up or down however you need to for your own business. But every 10,000 emails, you can expect to have a spam trap. This is, I've seen this maliciously done by competitors. I've seen this many different things. Be very careful here, guys, and make sure these are not on your email list. They can kill your ability to convert through email marketing. Very important. This right here is just kind of showing how we have seen the market of emails uh, age over time. In 2023, going across our entire platform, which by the way is billions of emails coming into our platform, 57% of them were good, valid, clean emails, okay? 57%, 20% of those were completely bad emails, no longer deliverable and should not be mailed. That is a large number. We have some of the others here, the abuse emails at 1%. And some of the do not mails, these could be the bots, these could be those toxic, those uh, disposable emails that you for sure do not want to be sending mail to. 
So look at this here, guys. This is everything coming into our platform. Uh, 57, only 57% of all of this type of data is good, safe email to send to. Uh, you know, the question is, are you aware of what 57% might be on your database? And how are you thinking about that? How are you breaking them out? How are you getting only sending to good contacts? It's again, really important because it's, it's email. We all just know it's, I can type anything I want there to create the, the prefix of the email. And as long as it's a good domain, uh, I can get anything in there that I want. So just pay attention here. And again, it's really good to get an analysis and understand what's happening with your database. Uh, especially if you've never done it. So how do I get these bad emails out? There's no other way to do this. You have to clean your email list. You might say to me, uh, Brian, but I'm already emailing all these people. So the bounces are gone. Uh, I, I don't have the complainers. I, I do something with. I can promise you no matter what you're doing, you're missing a piece of something. I guarantee it. We see it all the time. And it only takes one, two, three percent of this what you didn't know exists to ruin things for you and make it very difficult to get back to a good state. So if you're in the spam folder, it's very hard to get back into the inbox. You have to do a lot of things, a lot of repetition, a lot of good sending. Uh, if you're in the inbox, you wanna make sure you do not land in the spam folder. So make sure you clean your email list, guys. It's very important. Understand what is not even a good email. Here's another reason to do it. It's an easy one. I can save you money today. Make sure that whatever emails are not good, you remove from all of the systems that charge you for all the contacts sitting on that data or sitting in that system. So uh, most of the major systems are charging for the contacts that you have as storage. And that's how they do their billing. Well, why are you paying to store these emails in all these different systems? Clean it out. It's going to save you money as well. So you get some instant ROI by doing this as well. So, uh, you know, how do we get rid of these kind of bad leads, right? How do we understand and kind of do something about this? This is what's really important. So we only want to have email addresses in our marketing contact database that are actual, that has an actual inbox, right? So not something that's forwarding out to other people, not something that's recycled and going to, you know, expire in 24 hours. We want people that are going to have just actual inboxes, people like me and you, right? Not my group emails that I'm associated with, just me and you as individual email addresses. So understand your risk level. How do you know if you have disposables on your email address? How do you know if you have spam traps? How do you know if the people you mail are known to mark you as spam? And it's not just you. Maybe you've never even emailed these people, or maybe you have emailed in the past. If you're not setting up the right feedback loops, you'll have no clue who is marking you as spam. So you definitely want to get an idea, get insight to what's going on in your data. Um, you can also act in real time. So we have tons of integrations with different websites and CRM systems, and we can cache those bad leads before they ever make it a step further. This is the best thing to do because you are not, you are not reacting. You're being proactive and understanding what's happening before you ever hit send. This is really, really good. And the best way to stay proactive with it is to get in front of this. So you can use an API if you have a custom system or a backend system or working with Zapier. We have tons of different things that you have the ability to uh, you know, set the record for validation before it ever goes to the next place. So we can get it done. What do we do if you have them, right? So if you have multiple, you know, you have lists going on, you want to clean it, what do you do? Uh, you get ahead and you can do this in really kind of easy steps. You don't have to be a developer and you don't have to know how to do an integration. You can easily export your list, upload it into uh, zero bounds. We'll run a validation on it. We'll come back and give you a detailed report for an idea of how long this might take. It might take you about 45 minutes to an hour to run 100,000 records through our system. So if you have smaller amounts, it's just gonna take less time. If you have more, it might take slightly longer. But the amount of time that it takes and then the results that you get from it are really important. We have tons of um, integrations with cloud, like S3, uh, Google Drive, all these different things, FTP, SFTP, if you uh, need to take that route. But basically, let us process the data and let us get it back to you in a point where it won't even really mess up your timeline. Uh, long term, you want to get us in front of before you hit send because then you can make sure before you hit send that you have really good clean emails. 
So what you'll get back is a, is a really nice clean uh, list that's just gonna have valid emails and we'll provide all the data on all the other data points that we have uh, for the rest of your email addresses to make sure, again, you're only sending to good ones. So you can kind of set it and forget it. It's really quick, upload it, get the results, download it and put it back and you're good to go. Uh, if you're a little bit more technical or have people on a technical team that can help you, there's another way to do this, which is going through our API. Uh, this is allowing people to, uh, so wherever you're collecting the data, you can go ahead and put validation on that data point. So you have a contact form and it's, or sign up form, whatever it might be. When someone enters their email address, you can make a real time API call to zero bounce. We'll give you the validation status and post it right back. What people are doing is they're blocking the email from the get-go. We're catching typos. This is a very, very big piece that's also happening out there. And if you look at your database, you probably have something where someone typoed the, the domain, a fat finger data on mobile. This is very common stuff. And if you do this in real time, we can actually suggest the fix back to your customer and say, hey, did you mean that you know this was your right email instead? Think about the difference of that marketable contact then versus if you didn't do that and you never validated the data. Then you're gonna take it and send a bounced email to a bad email because he typoed it or she typoed it, whatever it might be. So get in front of this stuff if you can. It's super easy to do. It's super lightweight. There's not necessarily coding needed. We have many ways to do this and make it easy for you. And then also in the future, you can go ahead and also get this stuff done automatically. So once you put it on, use it on the API for your, your where you collect the data, then everything after that is nice and clean. That's exactly where you want things to be. You want good, valid emails. Um, so the reason and advantages of cleaning your email list, and you want to do this somewhat on a regular basis, guys. If someone says to you, oh, well, we cleaned this data last year. I already showed you the stats. 23% of this data is decaying every year. And it's going to be higher, by the way. If you have business emails, we do a lot of, we're a B2B shop. We're selling to a lot of businesses. We actually turned over 30% of our contacts last year. 30%, that's a huge number. So you might be in a, you know, a different spot. If you have more consumer-based emails, it might be a tiny bit lower. But still, 15% churn is not something to just ignore. You have to play, you have to do something. Uh, get these guys out. What it's going to do, it's going to give you better deliverability, high bounce rates. Any bounce rate over 2%, by the way, is really bad. That's going to get you into the, that's going to get you labeled as a spammer. Spam complaints. So these are the ones who mark you as spam. 0.1% of that will get you and marked as a spammer. You're in the spam folder. And spam placement is the worst place to be. Period. Everything you're doing is a waste of your time, a waste of your effort, a waste of your resources, everything. If it's in the spam folder, a million emails in the spam folder is awful. I would rather have 600,000 in the inbox because I got rid of all this bad data. So make sure you guys do this. It's about quality here, guys, not quantity. You want to have better campaign performance. Well, there's no way you're gonna do that if you're sending bad bounced emails to people. And also there's another piece here. If anyone is purchasing or acquiring data, you're getting, you're buying this list of, you know, I, I don't wanna to name too many people here. There are, let's use Litmus, 50,000 records of Litmus users. Oh my God, guys, please don't fall for this stuff. That email address and database has been repackaged, relabeled and sold thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times. You have to get the bad data out of that. Please do not ever send or don't even purchase this stuff. But if you have it or you ever purchased it and now it's mixed in the shuffle, you have to clean this stuff up. It's really, really bad. And I know conceptually it makes a lot of sense, right? You think like, oh, well, these are all litmus users. This is gonna be great. It's not, it's really bad, it's really bad. So uh, get some better insight to your data that you have. Get an understanding of how much churn you're seeing. This allows you to be smarter in all the ways that you do marketing. And again, with, with email marketing being so big, you have to be paying close attention to this stuff. Uh, so we did a, a case study with Bruce here over at Image Source. He came to us uh, and said, oh my God, my mail, uh, my mail provider is getting upset with me. They're gonna kick me off. I have a 19% bounce rate, okay? This is someone who collected emails organically over a long period of time. 
He knew something might be wrong with it, but just was like, whatever, we'll let the mail servers deal with it. 19% of his uh, campaign bounced. Then immediately put him into the spam folder. He had no idea what to do. He came to us. We cleaned up the data. And this is an idea of somebody who collects good emails. This is what happened to him. This was his result. Uh, he had about 100,000 emails in total. 45% was good. 45%. This is a lot of people here that I'm talking to. You're going to be just like this. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong, but you also didn't do anything. So we have to do something here. We have to get these 21,000 emails that were invalid. They have to go. He was emailing them. The mail servers do not like this because how can you have this many bounces if you're a good sender? How? They argue it's not possible. You're a bad sender. So that's what's happening. And you can see, you can get an idea of, you know, again, he had two, e two, email, uh, two emails on there labeled as spam traps. Now you might say 0% and go, eh, not a big deal. It's really bad. It should be zero. You don't want spam traps on your email address, on your email database. So make sure those are off. So again, just a good case study of, uh, you know, he came back and was, oh my God, this was amazing. You guys saved me. And he was able to get back into emailing and do his campaigns. So you need to clean your email list if it's been over three months. If you have not touched your email database and clean it in over three months, you need to do it. I would highly recommend you do not ever go longer than six months without cleaning the entire thing. Again, let's talk about the churn. 23%, okay, in six months, it would be half, right? So you're 11, 12%. You have to get that stuff out of there quick. You don't want to be sending and then deal with it. You want to be in front of this stuff. You don't want bounce rates higher than 2%. You're going to be labeled a spammer, 0.1%. So one out of every thousand emails getting marked as spam, any more than that is really bad. So again, be very careful. If you're adding new emails all the time and you're not doing real-time verification, you should really pay close attention here and look for real-time verification, especially if you're gonna instantly drop them into some sort of funnel that's gonna mail them. Uh, just put a step in place that checks to make sure that these are good emails before you go and send to them. Uh, so a couple of other things, there's more stuff to, there's more ways to look at the email address that you have uh, and try to see if you can find some stuff. So we've had people that come to us and they're like, hey, we've never emailed these, we have no idea, we wanna start with good reputation, what do we do? Well, what we can do is we can append uh, a feature that we have called activity data, which has uh, information based on the last known activity. If they've opened, clicked, forwarded, unsubscribed, or used that email address in a mobile app login, if you append that data with your valids, so they're valid and have recent known activity and send that, it will immediately start to boost your reputation because your open rate is gonna look very good. And hopefully your click-through rate is gonna look good as well, depending upon what you're sending. If you're also looking for people, uh, this is kind of something else that we've started to go down based on all the feedback and all of the people in marketing who are trying to find maybe a new email for somebody. But if you give us the name, the you know, first and last name of somebody and a, a business where they're working at, we're actually going to go and run through our algorithms and look to find the good valid email that you can use to send email to. So this would make sure that you're not sending to a bad contact or you're guessing what their email address might be. And then you want to monitor your reputation. Every single person has a sender score. If you send email, you have a sender score. You have to keep an eye on it and you have to know what's going on. And if it goes bad, you have to do something to improve it or you have to start over is actually what, what a lot of people don't even realize. You have to start over, new domain, new email address, and go ahead and push everything through and start and build over from scratch. So again, it's just very difficult to deal with. Um, so... What, what I wanted to do today is also just give, give everybody here the opportunity to get an idea of what might be on their database. We're going to do a thousand validations for free for anyone that's looking to uh, maybe sample their database and get an idea of what might be there on your list. You can go ahead and reach out to our support team at support at zerobounce.net or on our live chat system. Tell them you came from Litmus and they'll throw a thousand credits on your account so you can go ahead and get uh, started and get a sample and get an idea of statistically what your data is going to look like. Uh, the cost to do this stuff is very low, by the way. So if it's like, oh, no, not another one. I promise the ROI is instant if you are paying to save that data anyway. So again, I just really want to thank everyone today for joining with me. And thank you for uh, being part of Litmus Live. I know that we, uh, we all really appreciate everything. I really want to thank them for having me here today. 
And for everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And thanks again for watching.